Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 45 of the DMC podcast with your host today. Wise, humble, kind, caring, adventurous. Yep, it's me, Adam Rigby, and my very impressive, human, and very special guest today. Part of the dynamic duo that shaped and inspired generations of indoor cycling, fanatics and enthusiasts as the head of Les Mills RPM, responsible for uplifting and empowering group fit instructors around the globe. She now turns her attention and superpowers to her new business in uplifting mums, helping them gain confidence and courage to move and grow with Mum Squad. She's kind, she's caring, she is genuine, she's awesome, she's unbelievably authentic, an absolute rock star and part of my history. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, Sarah Ostergaard. Hi. Hi. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wrote that down. I'm like, I how, how can I do that in a one take? <laughs> How could I Mr. Rigby, I'm that? impressed. That was thank such you. a wonderful introduction. So thank you. No, look, look, um, my words are always heartfelt. I mean, uh, as we just briefly discussed before this, you and I haven't caught up in, in, in ages. And so it's great to great to reconnect and and um and chat with you. But you're a really important part of my story, especially in group fitness, which has been part of my life story. So to be able to chat with you and share some of your magic and wisdom um, and a little more of you uh, will help people sort of see a little more of me. Um, so thank you for your time. I, I really do appreciate it. I really appreciate you. Um, because we met probably 17 years ago, 17 oh. years ago. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yesterday. <laughs> but um you came to wellington to do a workshop and you were kind of the the first i term it rock star right in terms of mm. rock star um and a les mills uh uh presenter um director uh you know as good as it gets the the people that we see shaping the program doing the moves the music um, everything was, that was great about the program and attracted us as instructors to the program, you were it. And to see you and, and to get to do a class with you, it was really magical for, for me and for us in the room. Um, I remember that class. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah, I remember it, it went off. You guys yeah. were so into it. And like up in Auckland, the, the, the vibe was quite different. So coming yeah. down to Wellington, you guys just got so into it. And I just, yeah, I remember that class. I remember that yeah. day. I remember meeting you. Yeah, thank you. Well, welly vibes, mm. eh? And yeah. you know, I'm I'm always like uh, cu curious um, and adventurous. That was part of it, I guess. But always, uh, you know, when you put yourself in a position to to meet people like yourself, um, uh, always take the opportunity to come and say hi. And I wasn't really surprised, but man, you were just so down to earth, authentic, so incredible, incredibly humble and kind. And that's just who you are right it's what you live and breathe and I really love that and to see how nice you were and accommodating um was very inspiring that was probably the most inspiring thing for me to oh see you God. sit at the top of your game and be so authentically wonderfully kind um and it made me feel welcome and part of something really really cool so mm. thank you for that because that first interaction shaped every interaction since since then Yep. So the impact that you had by just being yourself was just amazing. Um, and I love that. But we talk about the, I've got the rock star background. I told you that. Um, <laughs> living the rock star life because Les Mills, the bubble within a bubble. Did you, how did you deal with that? Did you have any sort of per perception of that, that visibility of you as a rock star? I mean, people re were reaching out to you all the time and, no, um, not whatsoever. No, yeah. like, I think I, one thing that's always been really important to me is to be real, to be myself, to be authentic. And it's really nice that you say those words that, that I did come across that way, because even today, I still feel the same. Um, but, you know, people would come up to me and say, oh, Sarah, it's nice to meet you and Glenn. But like, <laughs> um, I think at the end of the day, one thing that I'd always say to them is, hey, we're just another instructor, just like you, you know, you just see us on DVD. We're just another instructor. And that's really important to, yeah. to know that we're just another another person, 
you know, yep. we know one special. We just, yeah, just a role model. Yeah, and you and you did it wonderfully well. I mean, Lee Lee Smith, old wheels, and I used to chat, and and to see you, um, to see you on the bike, we were always like, shit, Sarah was going hard today. Like you loved it, right? I mean, you yeah. loved the training, and that was something yeah. that was great. And you sat really authentically in that space because yeah. to see oh. you get up and ride that bike like it was a race, you know. And yeah. and we talk about embracing the journey and and the experience. Like you always would sit next to you and know you were in a situation where, mate, you were going to rip the wheels off that thing. So you had to ride and be at your absolute best. Yeah, and, so and I guess it's the same thing, like, you know, being authentic to myself, but being authentic to the workout as well, right? Yeah, like yeah. People want to see you working hard as well. It's um, And replicating what you want them to achieve as well. It's it's being authentic to the workout. Yeah, and it's, and it's so it's so great. It's so great to see that and to be inspired by someone who's fully immersed in the experience themselves, who 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 loves it. And there was an element to you just lighting up when you did that. And there's so mm. much else that gets in the way, eh? Because you're so you're in the middle of enjoying this thing, um, <laughs> and, and the exercise and the movement and the emotion that's created. And then you're like, okay, I have to be the coach. I have to say all these things. I have to do all this <laughs> stuff. I have to tick all these boxes. <laughs> so yeah, how, there's a lot how, going on. Yeah, what was the process of you that, like, getting about the, the balancing act? Some of the things you really had to rely on and fall back on to make sure that it was a successful experience, both on and off the bike. Um. Uh, so yeah, I just. I, you know, I think it's basically dotting your I's, crossing your T's, making sure you're covering all the basics. And, you know, the more experienced you get, the more implicit all that becomes. Uh, and then it's just uh, understanding, like, why you're there, why you're doing what you're doing, and hopefully portraying that. So I'm there for the people. I'm there yep. to create a journey, create a workout experience, um, teaching from that from that place of the why and also having fun and just you know living living the moment and creating that journey for um, whoever's in front of me yeah yeah and the experience on DVD is is, is similar there are, there are elements of the magic but the grassroots say eh, when you get into your class with your people yeah, and yeah. you get you get that yeah. full connection away from the cameras that's the real it's magic quite different. And to that's be able the to real do- magic yeah, to be able to do that with you is, is kind of cool, eh? Because there's an element where you can just relax yeah. into your own environment and your people without that external pressure. Yeah, of the camera um, in front of you. Yeah. It, and one thing one thing that's striking, like the, the, the role that you had as a presenter and at the forefront of, you know, working with the music and the movement and working with Glenn, mm-hmm. and we can deep dive into that, it's just relentless, eh? It's and one thing yeah. I noticed that you do a release and then you guys are already sort of three months yeah. ahead and six months ahead and you're not you're not focused on okay we, you're like okay cut can done gone yeah and oh Glenn's month, like month, completely month. moved on where it was for me it was a bit different because I, I was always in the post production side of things yeah but basically as soon as Glenn had finished the filming the release he'll be already searching for other musics and that's complete <laughs> history right but yeah. for me it was a bit different because I was always working on the post-production side of things so doing the notes and all the education and stuff that went alongside it yeah and all the joy mm-hmm. that writing stuff down and expressing notes to hundreds of thousands of instructors can bring yeah yeah it was, <laughs> yeah it was cool it was good fun doing that um and it and I guess in 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 reference to that you know, you, you, you put your best front forward when you're in a position where you're putting yourself out there on stage, you're doing something to try to relate to so many different people. And obviously you can't connect to everybody at a different experience. And yeah. and at any, you know, when you throw yourself out there like, like you guys do and have historically and continue to do and challenge yourself, how did you deal with like the, the, the feedback? Because not all of it's good, eh? It doesn't connect no. to some people. Some people fire no. some stuff at you. Yeah. What are the tools that you use? What helped you get through that? Yeah, I remember really a- early on in my presenting career. Like, I mean, I started presenting on RPM 23. Um, so I was I was video, um, I was on the videos with Mike McSweeney. And I, I never had a mic back in those days. But my, one of my first ones that I got a mic on was RPM 26. 
And yep. back in those days, we never used to have hair and makeup and you used to do it yourself. And I remember I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to do something like snazzy here. So I had these two little buns and I literally looked like Princess Leia. Um, <laughs> and I got some really negative feedback on how I looked. Wow. And it, like that, that really made me really upset because, you know, no one likes to be um, told that they look stupid or whatever. Um, yeah. But, you know, as I got more experience into the role, like you sort of took all, all on that on board, but you didn't let it weigh you down. Um, yeah, it, 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 negative feedback is good because you can take it or and you can take it on board or you cannot take it on board. Um, you can grow from negative feedback. Uh, you can learn, you can, uh, you know, enhance and broaden your perspective on everything. So ne- I don't see negative feedback as a, a negative. Like for me, I think it's a it's an opportunity to grow and develop. Um, but then like, you know, there's some negative feedback that you're like, oh, like the hair thing, like seriously, who cares about hair? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you, there's some negative feedback you can, you can dismiss and some negative feedback you can, you can um, listen to. Yeah, it's the superficial stuff, eh? And and yeah. you've got to always question where that feedback comes from and listen yeah. to people saying, I think that you, I think, I, 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 it's generally about them, not about you. But when you <laughs> when people are trying to criticize you or bring you down about really superficial stuff, like a like hair for an <laughs> for instance, I think they're kind of missing the point because if they're watching an experience just for haircuts, maybe they should tune into uh, yeah. a YouTube channel that does specifically hair. But yeah. um, in saying that. After that, I'm sure your hair was immaculate. <laughs> well, I think after that, we started having a hair and makeup person. So it became a little bit um, better. <laughs> um, the funny thing, eh, going, going into hair and makeup, and males obviously do it as well, except Glenn. Hang on. You <laughs> used to get like mascara and stuff on. I'm sure you did. No, <laughs> no, no, eyeliner. That was that was my nonu, all black. So if it's okay. <laughs> my for nonu. Yeah, I Glenn wish. Glenn does not get anything put on. He just yeah. goes in and just, yeah, just a little brush to get the glow off his face and that's it. All natural, folks. It's all uh, <laughs> it's yeah. all natural. And then I guess it's just that progression of sprint because once you've done a class like that, then you're just a hot mess and everything leaks off you anyway. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it, it is funny, yeah. And, and, and obviously being brave enough to put yourself out there and the realisation that not, not, not everybody's going to get what you do but if you stay true to who you are and you're being who you are and you're doing your absolute best, then it doesn't yeah. really matter anyway. And negative or negative feedback, I, I term it as, const- is it constructive? Or is critical. it constructive feedback? Um, yeah. And that's the most important thing. So probably advice for people that are in the pr- in, in, in roles that do deliver feedback, make sure it's constructive, eh? Yeah, and- but also, also having a realization that you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And I accept that. If people, for example, that don't like me and if they don't, they don't want to come to my classes, just hey, just don't come. I don't, I don't mind. You know, it's not. I'm not everybody's um, preferred instructor. You know, like yeah. you're going to have your haves and your have nots. Yeah, and that was always, and that's always a big challenge. You know, you go to a class and there's people just like you because they love your vibe. You know, you translate mm. the workout in a, in a specific way that relates to a number of people. The skill that you had was the ability to react to relate to a whole lot of people. You know, you sat really well on the coach. You had the energy, mm. the enthusiasm. You had the heart, the the, the passion, um, mm. and the connection, which was great. And and again, rode like an abs- rode like an absolute rock rock star, which is really really cool. <laughs> um, so when you're in I mean, at, at the top level and in instructing depending on the environment and I guess Auckland there's a lot of instructors a, a highly com- a, a highly competitive environment right mm-hmm. and there's always people coming up the next best thing or people that think they're the next big thing or people that want what you have want to want want to see elements of that and say I want to be that yeah I want to be that how do you not just survive in a competitive element because you did it for such a long time. You, th- you thrive. So how do you thrive or tools that you've used to thrive in a competitive environment? Because you've done it off the stage, obviously with yeah. a history of, of cycling and competitive sport, but bringing that element into instruction. We can talk a little bit about the history, but yeah. How, how did you thrive in that incredibly competitive 
group fit instructor environment? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm a super competitive person. I'm so competitive. Mm. Like I'm washing the dishes and I'm like trying to wash dishes as fast as I can before Glenn dries them all. you right. Um, so I'm super competitive, but within the group fitness domain, like not so much. It's, you know, just reflecting on this now, like I look at people coming through, like, for example, I, I was teaching body pump out at New Lindley's Mills and I saw these two young people who were out on the um, floor and I said, I they used to come to my class every Saturday and I'm like, mm, you guys would be awesome instructors. You guys would be awesome instructors and, and like looking at them and they'd be like getting into the music and all that sort of jazz. And I actually ended up approaching them and saying to them, hey, guys, I think you should start teaching. You guys would be fantastic. Um, and so I started taking these instructors on and I think they used to teach with me. I can't remember, but it cut a long story short. These two instructors are now presenters on DVDs cool. and like, I'm not competitive whatsoever. I sort of look at people coming through and I think, Hey, awesome. They'd be so good. And I, I want to help them. I want to uplift them and bring them into um, that sort of echelon of, of a top instructor because I can see that they've got the goods. So answer to your question, um, I'm not really that competitive in the fitness industry side of things. Um, but don't get me wrong, I like to be on top of my game. I like I, I yeah. want to be the best that I can be. I guess I'm competitive with myself rather than others. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm competitive with myself, I probably would say in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. That's the gold. And I and I and I think you coined it wonderfully, being competitive with yourself. And if you view the the level that you were at as the top step, you know, the, the great thing is for you to articulate to everyone that there's plenty of room. Yeah. Up absolutely. Here. It's not like a pyramid. It's yeah. a flat deck and and our job as instructors, I believe, and as you've encapsulated, is to inspire people to take the step to do what we do and inspire others. And that's yep. the legacy, right? That's the continuation mm -hmm. of what we're doing, getting people into um, something that we're yep. super passionate about, sharing that with them yep. and getting them to share that with other people. 100%. And yep. that, that, will, that, will, that will never end. But I love that, that you, you never saw it as a competitive environment because you were just trying to be the best you can be and doing something yeah. that you truly enjoyed and were passionate about. That's the gold, people. You could take that to the bank, mark that yeah. on the potty <laughs> and take, yeah. that with you every, take that with you everywhere. Uh, not everybody's Definitely. out to get, not, not everybody's out to get you. So <laughs> just be the best you can be. I'm all, I'm yeah. all for that. Um, about yeah, being yeah. the best version of yourself and, and no one can have you up, hey, when you're just trying to do your best. Um, yeah. And of course, surrounding yourself with awesome, with awesome people. And, and that's what, that's what I've uh, found and talked to before. The people that you meet and the relations, relationships that you have, um, because the industry itself can pick you apart sometimes if you let it, right? And yeah. so to have that solidarity and people who understand what it is to be an instructor, the the struggle of uh, the relentless nature of it, having to get up and perform in days that you're probably not quite feeling it, staying true to tr staying true to who you are, trying to be the best version of yourself, mm. uh, or understanding what that best version looks like, mm. um, is a constant struggle. And as as I say, you did you did that really 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 well. Um, yeah. Let's go. Let's wind the clock back. Mm -hmm. Let's not go dates. <laughs> no, that's not prior good. to obviously prior to a, bit, a little bit of history i mean what leads you into into cycle fitness is kind of strange because i mean you you rode bikes at a high level anyway outside prior to group fitness uh, yeah so when i was a mm, probably a, about 12 years old i used to race yeah. and then i stopped when i was probably about 17 i was racing sort of national level and then I took it back up as an adult. I think I was about 34, I think. I took it back yeah. up as an adult. Yeah. And yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd raced for New Zealand and raced overseas and raced in Europe and Canada, Australia and stuff. So I did it at quite a high level. So I've always been sort of involved in cycling. Um, yeah, at a, at a high level. I started group fitness in my 20s. 
and um yeah I was nursing and doing racing and teaching so my cup was very 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 full I was a very busy person um yeah so I've been involved in cycling for years yeah still got my bike I still get it out every now and then dust it <laughs> off I remember you and Glenn um this many years ago doing K2A eh? Yep. You in a K2, which was a couple of hundred Ks in the Coromandel, which is an absolute leg buster. Uh, <laughs> the climbs in it. I mean, it's not yeah. like European sort of Alps nuts, but like the climbs are really, really good climbs. They're awesome. Just dense, but I dense. Like but, that, but that gave you that authenticity, eh? And, yeah. Um, and obviously learning the, the intricate nature of being able to write technically sound and imparting that on on, yeah, um, and it's sort, of, it's sort of been lost a little bit in the cycle classes these days, I think. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's not so important. But I think it's quite, you know, just it's a it's a bow in your string. Is that how you say it? Um, string in your bow? String in your bow. I, I always get them mixed <laughs> up. There'll be lots of Sarahisms coming out in this discussion today, Adam. Um, so, you know, if you, if you do know how to ride a bike, it just makes – what you're trying to deliver even more authentic. Um, I mean, you know that you're the same. Yeah. Same with Lee yeah. And Glenn, they all know how to ride bikes, and it yeah. just makes what you're doing come across just land heaps better. I yeah, and I, and I think whatever whatever the piece of machinery that you connect to, or whatever yeah. the movement, you should really make the effort to be technically proficient, and, yeah. and because it's safe. Yeah, it's safety as well, eh? Yep. And I, you know, I I do reiterate the importance of being technically sound with all of the, the modules that I'm doing, the training modules, you spend a lot of time on technique because it's important. You have to yep. role model, role model what it is, what it does. And then um, then you can talk to how it feels, eh? Yeah, yeah. And it and it comes across better for your participants because they understand, you know, they can yeah. actually feel it. They can see it and they can feel it. Yeah. So it's a win-win situation. I love that. You'll never get any arguments with me and me old mates in the background there in regards to technique. I'm all 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 day, every day, because sometimes when you're in the box, that's all you've got. Technique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only you can just fall back on that, eh? When you're out of gas, when you're out of gels, <laughs> when your drink bottle's empty, <laughs> all, yeah. all you've got, all you've got is is the technique. And so when you when you came into um with it with that history of cycling, when you came into group fit, it wasn't starting with cycling, eh? Um no. Uh no. So I started on a program called Body Circuit. Wow. And Body it? Circuit was like a alternating between a station on the outside, station on the inside. So good, eh? Justin yeah, used to I, love that. Yeah, I, Jason I remember, Parsley used to take it in Wellington. Yeah. Yeah, I remember teaching it, um, learning, going, oh, my God, what the heck am I going to say? <laughs> I've got, like, because it's, like, 45-second buzzers. I'm like, what am I going to say for 45 seconds? And I remember just doing my knees and going. And, and then I learned um, a program that Ruth Pettahy, um, she I did an instructor course that Ruth Pettahy did. Um, and oh, there's no instructors actually today that are still teaching, but but um, it, it was with a program that Mark New created. I can't even remember what it was called, Mummy Brain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so that was years ago. That's when I very first started on with, with was this program um, with Ruth Pritahi that she, she created. It was really awesome. Oh, so nice. I did Body Circuit, and then I started teaching. Um, Glenn and I went overseas, and we lived in Dubai for a few years. And so I started teaching, I did my RPM module over there. I think I learned on <clears throat> RPM 7, I think it was. Cool. Um, and then I learned body pump and body combat and body attack. Uh, Glenn and I used to teach body combat together. It was so funny. We used to have these um, matching uh, combat suits, yes. uh, camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny but it used to be the best class like we used to teach at new Lynn and we used to teach together and it was so much fun we used to love yeah. it um and there's some there's some great footage of glenn and his body attack days eh yeah oh, he's a machine like oh, he's so he flexible really? he can do cossack still he's he's a machine um, I mean, he's he has a, a, a an incredible mindset and a res, relentless pursuit of excellence. Like I, I love. You guys have no idea. Too. What's that? No idea about his mindset. 
None. None. <laughs> I, I, I laugh about it because, you know, you in, in your household and, and um, you know, there's a real healthy competition, uh, a, a competitive element where you're just continuously encouraging and inspiring each other so even yeah, family yeah. walks take on a whole new element you know <laughs> so <laughs> I can imagine yeah. the Ostergaard the Ostergaard family walk where Glenn's just taking a backpack what's in that sandwiches no mate just got a couple of uh, 20 kg plates in there <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Sarah would be like oh two is it okay yeah all right Come on. <laughs> totally. here we go <laughs> no honestly Glenn motivates me endlessly he is the yeah. most motivating person like I mean, we've been together for 23 years awesome. um, and like he just continually, continually inspires me. Yeah. He is just the most amazing person. Yeah. And a doer, eh? Oh. He's a doer. And that's, I guess that's what's, what's great. And how can you not be inspired? I mean, I've got a doer in the household as well, the lovely wife, um, Justine, and we're the same, you know? Yeah. Um, long-term partnership. Um and and uh, and I love that and she's excelling in life I told her this morning that I'm so super proud of her um mm. and just for where she's at in her life yeah. and you know it's like when you see your partner excelling and I'm sure you know Glenn and yourself are the same just being happy for that person and knowing that they're fulfilling their their absolute potential because that's yeah. what we ask of other people yeah you know? true and, and sometimes and someone close to you, it makes all the difference, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Being able to celebrate that as a team because it's a shared success. Yeah. And that's what I love about your guys, your guys' story, the partnership that you had, um, and the beautiful intensity and rivalry and energy and connection that you guys had on stage for so, so many years. You know, uh, and obviously we hark back to to the program and, it, and it, as it develops it's not like the, the good old days we call them in the studio you know the little studio with a camera in your face and the, the compact environment it's not supposed to I mean times change but it was such yeah. a wonderful part of the history of the program and that's why I encourage instructors if you can get your hands on some of the old master classes with the old DVDs the old yeah, DVDs. Yeah. Oh, or, hang on, VHSs. VHSs. <laughs> oh, no, that was, wow. I still got some of them. <laughs> oh, mate, how good. But just going back and capturing the magic because it was, it was you know, a piece of it was, uh, you know, now it's the, the the product has definitely shifted and where it's at and they're doing a great job in, in terms of how they're transitioning the instructors and the, and the, the program into that space um, while trying to, retain as much of that magic as um as we can uh justin and i are back up we did we were fortunate enough to go and do the sprint master class up in and um you know glenn was there seeing him and his element just kicking the shit out of out of everyone because he loves it and it, it, it was just a wonderful moment for me where you know i, just, I was just looking at it and looking at him and i could see in his eyes that um he is like yeah and he recognized that i loved it as much as he loved it and i I, I love that type of stuff as well. Yeah. So continuously inspired by someone. And as you say, that's your day to day. Mm. You know, yeah. and that's I'm very day. fortunate. I am extremely fortunate uh, that I see Glenn in his day to day life. And because he it certainly rubs off on me, it motivates me. Yeah. But I, I, and also, um, Sarah, <laughs> taking credit for the, for the part that you play in, in his life and being his yeah. rock and his inspiration you know that's that's the thing that you sit back and yeah. you see this other person excelling and i'm yeah. and i'm 100 percent, a thousand percent glenn 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 would say this too you know it's a team the best team oh, yeah, 100%. and he'll he feel as though he up. has yeah he has the mm. best team so yeah we work makes, well together yeah which is great right which is which is super cool to have a long-term relate to to have a long-term relationship, we know it takes work. And there are oh. highs and there are lows that you oh, have to Don't get me wrong. It's not all roses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, know. Know. <laughs> I know. It's not the postcard. It's not the postcard. No. But that's what makes it great. And when you get to this part of your life, you look back at it and go, fuck, that was a close one. But here we are. Yeah. You know, and th these are the moments that we need to celebrate, um, definitely celebrate more of. And so yeah. you, you met, obviously met Glenn in the in the gym was it a chance meeting did you gaze up at him at stage and think oh I want a piece of that what was that I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to say he stalked me um but it was the other way around 
<laughs> every, um, every, yeah, every tale has two sides, eh? Let's hear yeah. your one. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be honest because I used to stalk him. But the thing is, I was always too shy. I would never go up and say and introduce myself to him. So I'd, yeah. I'd literally turn up to his, like, 6.15 p.m. body pump class. Or I can't remember what it was. Then Tuesday morning at 6.15 in the morning, I'd be there again, front row, <laughs> Front Tuesday row. night. Oh, there I am again. Yeah. So he kind of got um, to know me that way. And, and then, and then like, I'd be like stretching. I'm like, oh, excuse me. Would you just be able to show me how to stretch? So I got really flexible, which was really awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, he ended up asking me out because I was always too shy to ask. So that's oh, how awesome. that story unfolded. And you've got to take a chance. I, I guess if you, if you know, you know, and when you see something in someone, Again, that that that's inspiring and taking the time just to just to throw yourself out there and take the risk and take the chance. Look, look where it's yeah. led. Yeah. And and coming out of um, coming out of that uh, the you know the the relationship, the honeymoon period, the the marriage, the the uh, time together, and and professional um professional career that you had together in Les Mills how do you get that balance right because it's like you're working together a lot oh, yeah. like all the time yeah. and then you're coming home was there a switch that you're like hey shop talk zero um not really uh we sort of live and breathe it like we really yeah. do I mean even now even though I'm not really involved in Les Mills um like he's always telling me what's happening within his job and everyday life. And I'm like, cool, yeah. awesome. What about this? And I still contribute in, in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. We live and breathe it. Uh, um, yeah. We live and breathe it. Like we don't really, I mean, we disconnect at night. Like we sit down and watch TV and watch our shows and binge watch working mums at the moment. That's our <laughs> go-to. Um, but, you know, we, we do live and breathe it. Yeah. It's part of our life. Which is cool too, eh? Right? Yeah. And and, a, yeah. and it's a shared it's a shared passion, and it doesn't matter what you talk about. Way, to be honest, what's it's, that? It's a passion. I don't think we'd have it any other way. Like, you know, it's what we do. We we love it immensely. We both love our our jobs, and um, yeah, it's just how it is. <laughs> how it is, and mm. you know, taking the time eventually, where you're like, okay, you need you need to move on. Obviously. Um, the, the big shift for you was parenthood and becoming a mum and <clears throat> not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> uh, you know, you've got an incredible family, a family unit. Um, as, uh, you know, one became two, became five for the, for the Ostergaard clan. And mm-hmm. It, invariably as it always is those moments in your life when you hold your baby in your arms for the first time there's a shift you can't help but live a life yeah. you feel a lot of stuff you've never felt before and suddenly yeah. your life takes a direction or your life will pull you in a direction based on a moment like that and yeah. to want to do it three times <laughs> yeah, what <laughs> what, <laughs> what? Yeah. but um talk, talk me through you know, the, the, the shift for you and, and I guess the development and growth that you experienced over that time and the challenges of what as well is coming yeah. out of at the top of your career and then devoting your life to these little bundles of joy and becoming a mum for the first time. Can you express or explain even what that's like? Yep, funny, funny story around that. So before, when I got pregnant with Lily, my oldest, who's now 10, um, I said to my family, my life is not going to change when I have children. Okay, this is what I said. I was like, I'm just going to continue on as normal. I'm going to bring Lily to the office. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. (laughs) Child's going to work around me. Complete opposite complete opposite like I went to the nth degree with Lily and I I mean I didn't give give up everything but our life changed our life changed but it also changed for the better um like with Lily she had um a condition called febrile convulsions so when she got a a fever she would have like a sort of like an epileptic fit but 
but not really. So she'd have a convulsion. So every time she got sick, we also we always went to, um, sort of on tender hook. We used, always used to get really worried that she'd have a febrile convulsion. And it sort of made, I guess, motherhood quite stressful for me. Um, like I, I used to be a theatre nurse. I used to deal with highly stressful situations all the time, like life and death. And we'd be sitting there with a knife, a scalpel, and, you know, blood would be going everywhere. And it wouldn't stress me out whatsoever. But having a child yeah. and having to go through that with her, it really changed me as a person. Um, and it made, it made yeah, it sort of made me wrap my oldest child up in Cottonwood a little bit. Um, fast forward 10 years and, and she's since stopped having them um, because they do grow out of the condition and the other two never had them. Um, it, it sort of shaped me as a mother and, yeah, I mean, my life has been changed considerably since having children. But like like I said at the beginning of this part, um, for the best because, like, I love my children dearly and I'll do anything and everything for them. But it did change my outlook on my priorities, um, yeah. my focus. Um, I mean, I continued teaching throughout having children, um, but my focus was 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 moved. I think it's a yeah. definite shift in it's a definite shift in power that you feel, eh? Because I think it's so so great to 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 have that the realization in the moment that life is just so much bigger. And there's so much yeah. more opportunity for you. And like I say, you know, Justin yeah. and I, I, I still remember it going far out. We made this person. It's insane. What what this thing that we've got to take home in the car, yeah. slowest drive ever. Now what do we do with it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then second, second child, you're like, ah, yeah, we know this. Oh, third yeah. child. Uh, third child. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Third child, you can just leave it home. They know what to do. Yeah, with a bag of chips and a, and a bottle of pop. <laughs> robust, resilient, robust and resilient yeah. creatures. And um, funny, funny because Ella, she has just been sick. Um, she's been sick for the last week. And and she hasn't been sick at all in her five years of life. She's never had any illness. So yeah. it's quite different to Lily, who was sick quite often and, and literally <clears> wrapped her up in cotton wool, to this, this one who... Ella, she's just such a um, fearless, sort of free-spirited child, because, probably because she wasn't wrapped up in cotton wool, you know? Yeah. It's quite, quite an interesting thing. Well, we've got to get out child. and about and experience all those things. I mean, it's the, the the climate now and the world now with all of the the, the stuff that's going on out there, specifically in, in the sense of COVID, um, super challenging, eh? And you... you uh, I guess with young children, you're susceptible to it. They go out to school or kindy or play groups and they come home with it. You guys were affected? Yeah, Glenn and Oliver both got it. But okay. the, the, other, the three of us, the other three girls didn't. So, yeah, I'd imagine sort of COVID would rock up to Glenn and try and work its way in and just realize it had no chance and then just disappear. Try he and literally get his... hit a sniffle and it was, like... <laughs> it was the only way in through his nostrils. <laughs> oh, my head it. He never gets sick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh I don't, what a nightmare to live with. How do you put up? <laughs> How do you put up with it? <laughs> don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, hey, I, you know, you're right with the with the experience. You can deal with adversity. And you can mm. see other people like hearing other people baby babies crying, but when you hear your own baby crying, or when you see your own baby sick or your own child, mm. and someone you love unconditionally, then yeah, yeah. man, that hurts like <sighs> far out. That hurts. And there's even though you have power, you feel powerless. Yeah. Um, you can't control it. Yeah. Yeah, and first aid training, what whatever you know, when you put in a situation like that, if you see your child in a, in in present present danger or your perception of danger is heightened because you're in full protector mode that in, that instinct wow mm. it's incredible eh? so you can't help but kind of reinvent a, another version of yourself eh? and do yeah. you think the sensitivity is heightened all of that all of this all of the senses yeah, yeah uh, awareness of your surroundings and everything you're just protective mode you just go into protective mode dude I, I tell you when when um i, I remember annabelle 
when Annabelle was born, you know, Justine, um, no, no drugs. She was like, yeah, give it to me. Here we go. Um, it's no different to a 10K run. Let's go. And she, um, you know, Annabelle, Annabelle came out and I was the one that was emotional. You know, Justine was great. <laughs> she was in awe of what she just accomplished. Mm-hmm. And she was kind of thinking, when, when do you think I could go for a run next? You know, <laughs> yeah. I was like, slow down, love. Slow yeah, down. I can imagine. This. Yeah, but I, I, I was overcome with that protective yeah. instinct and that urge and I knew what it was like that I would do anything that I could to make sure that this life force was looked after and cared for yeah what I an amazing that, feeling eh? there was a time that Glenn and I went on our first outing <laughs> with Lily and we're walking across the road to go to the mall and had Lily in her in her pram and Glenn was like, like <laughs> stop to the traffic stop like he was like so protective I was like oh my god calm the farm bro <laughs> dad vibes eh? dad yeah. vibes I, oh, oh you know it's so much to be celebrated like I say I've got a, there's a couple of young guys at the gym that are just going through the, the they're in the final weeks actually one of one of um young instructors who's a guy that I just plucked off the back of the studio and said hey bro you should teach <laughs> um as we talked about before but to see him come into his own and now become a father oh. and I said mate you they were going oh you know we know life's going to change I said yeah of course it's going to change and I said yeah. it'll be one of the toughest things you'll do but it'll be one of the most rewarding Rewarding. and every struggle you go through it is worth it it is an an incredible 100% incredible journey and wouldn't change a bar wouldn't change a bar of it as hard as it is because being a parent is hard eh? being a uh look being a husband being a wife um being in a relationship is hard living is Mm -hmm. hard in general, being a being a parent is incredibly challenging. And then you go to the state where you are, where your kids are going off to school for the first time and you take the mm. photo on the front doorstep. Totally. <laughs> You'll be seeing that in nine days. Nine <laughs> days. Like, like, oh. but I'm counting. Third no, child at school. I, whoop, whoop. I bet you are. But to see that, <laughs> but to but to see the growth and development is kind of scary too, eh, when they get in that environment. And and for me the 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 biggest learning is is making sure that you know who their friends are and who they're hanging out with so we always we always are having kids over to see who's who in the zoo and who who's got our our children's best interests at heart and who feels the same way about them that we do yeah um you know what what are some of the things that you've tried to impart on your on your children some of the values that are most critical to you so a big one is gratitude awesome gratitude is huge like every night I sit we sit at the table I'm like right kids what are you grateful for so we eat dinner and they go around and 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 say that now the five-year-old says first she's the one that says it first mom what are you grateful for today you know it's it's, so gratitude is huge manners obviously um showing your gratitude so please and thank yous and stuff um kindness yeah is another one treat others as to how you want to be treated that's a huge yeah. one kindness um and and just yeah um yeah i think kindness and gratitude are probably the two biggest um truth honesty yeah being honest and being real <laughs> you know being real to get that at grassroots and because a lot of people miss out on that and not necessarily children, but humans in general, because we, we, we're bad at it. And obviously mm-hmm. at the centre of it, being kind and, and kindness comes in many, in many forms, but being kind to yourself, eh? giving, you, giving yourself permission or recognition. Yep. Um, but to have that for, you know, to have that as a grounding for your kids and to be able for them to celebrate it and to hear them actually uh, that's in awesome. a position where they're saying, what are you grateful for? How good is that? Uh, I love it. Yeah, Ella's really good like that. She's really aware. Ella, she's she's awesome. She's a really cool kid. Yeah, and again, as as parents, we don't give ourselves credit for the position our children are in. And although they have to do the mahi and get out there and do a lot of the things and take on a lot of the heartbreak themselves and to, and to watch our kids go through that as well. But also sitting back and saying, do you know what? I've got a couple of pretty impressive humans on the planet. Yeah, well, we're very proud of our kids. They're, they've each got their own individual strengths. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and we we try to enhance those strengths. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're really proud of our kids. Yeah, they're awesome kids. And that's wonderful too because from coming from two, do, do you term yourself as high achievers or what What would you? Um, 
what hard we workers. Them? Yeah, grafters. Yeah, we're grafters. Yeah, we do the mahi. We, you know, we get stuck in. Glenn yeah. and I, we both do. We immerse ourselves in anything that we do and we yeah. give our 100%. And, and we hope that our children will do the same. Yeah, and I, I love that too. And, and you see a byproduct of that because I, I challenge anybody to outwork Glenn. And, and the funny thing was, I remember harking back to, you know, even back in the, the DVD days when I spent some time with him in Auckland, he said, come for a workout. And the stuff that he used to do pre class, like deadlifts and, you know, these explosive weight sessions, I'm like, holy shit. Where mm. does this guy get his energy? He is relentless. And he hasn't changed. You know, he's no. 52. Glenn, well, he's about to turn 52 on Monday. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, he, he hasn't changed. Like, he go for a 90-minute run. He, <laughs> the day before he got diagnosed with COVID, he went for a 90-minute run. <sighs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But again, Jeez. mahi, it's hard work. Yeah. And that puts, that puts you yeah. ultimately a... Eh, I think it puts you in a position of power or empowerment, self-power, knowing yeah, that I you've done everything you can. Yeah. 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 And that, I, I guess that leads me wonderfully, a wonderful segue onto <laughs> <laughs> the next chapter in Sarah Ostergaard's, uh, let's call it her legend. <laughs> um, and, and what you're doing now is you've developed a, uh, a tool, an online tool to be able to reach out to mums, your mum squad, and mm -hmm. connect in a different way. And like we say, not everybody has the ability, the resources, the bravery to step inside a gym or the opportunity. And you've mm -hmm. found a wonderful yeah. way to share your incredible tools um, and your knowledge and experience um, and your authenticity and your work ethic and your kindness to people through Mum Squad, um, can you talk me through the 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 journey? Was it something that you always saw yourself doing um, from having children and thinking, "Shit, you know, there's so much more that I can help people with"? What 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 started it, and what led you to where you are today? So basically, it started. Um, we live in a small little community called Devonport, which is uh, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes from the Auckland city. Um, and it's a peninsula and basically it's the end of um, one way in, one way out. And the traffic is horrendous. It always takes ages to get back into Takapuna or the city. Um, but basically um, it started with two mums uh, who are friends of mine, neighbours. And we would just every Sunday we'd meet and we'd go and do a workout. I'd take them for a run around the block and there's a, um, we live close to the Navy base. And yep. there's little stations that you can do step up. So you can, they've got some like some big heavy steel rods that you can do deadlifts. And so basically every Sunday we'd meet and we'd go and do that. And we'd sort of got round on the street and people started saying, oh, Sarah, could I join? So in the end, I took it to the school and there'd be fast forward, say, I don't know, 10 months or so, there'd be like 20 people joining me. They'd each bring their dumbbells and we'd all do a like a 50 minute session. And that went on and people would say to me, oh, Sarah, do you think you could do another session? So I ended up um, increasing my sessions to, well, today now I'm doing five sessions a week. And it's hugely a community th um, thing that I do it out of the school hall and I do it in the community house. Um, but when COVID hit, I then took it online. Uh, and so people would still be doing my workouts who are in the community and um, do the workouts online. So uh, basically I started because I knew that how hard it was to be a mum, how hard it was to get me time, how hard it was to focus on myself, on my health and well-being. Um, I knew that fitness was good for me. So I had that education and I knew what it did for my, my mental health, my physical health. Um, and so I wanted to bring that to mums in the, within the community uh, who possibly were time poor who didn't want to go to a gym because they felt threatened or they, you know, it's, it's quite, um, it's quite hard to go into a, um, a gym where it's full of 20 somethings who are beautiful buff and, you know, whatever. And most women sort of their self-confidence is low. Um, so I brought this into the community initially to, to stop those barriers 
Um, and yeah, so it is what it is today. I've got like a hundred or so members um, that participate either online or on the community. Ooh. I've also taken it a step further and now I run eight week challenge. Just frozen, just frozen. Short technical glitch, people, but we are back. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically basically it's about me just getting more mums moving and um empowering them to find a better version of themselves yeah I, and i'm just so passionate about it i just love it so much yeah and i <clears throat> and i think that what's great about it too a eh, the awareness that there are so many different elements to fitness and fitness has so many different faces um and for some people you know if we can inspire people just to get out of the house and walk around the block and that's a win yeah and 100%. fitness is how you feel about yourself fitness is moving and we are machines after all and we need to do our best for ourselves yeah, to yeah. move but also inspire others to, others to move mm. um so that's awesome i'm i'm so uh i'm so delighted that you've got the opportunity to to do that and and to propel that message that I know is really part of who you are, um, part of your life story and your love story. So it's really cool that you've got the, got the ability to continue to communicate that. So it's really, really super cool to see. So if anybody um, knows anybody who's in a position that needs some inspiration, especially from home, then reach out. Mum Squad. Uh, fitness. Mum Squad Fitness. Dot com. Dot com. On, um, yeah. And you can check her out on Instagram, of course. Yeah. Um, what we'll do um i just a couple of quick questions mate because i know i um, got to march on because you are super busy and great at saying yes like me to a number of things <laughs> um what 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 um and, <clears throat> and if i think back to where you are now the super enhanced version of yourself with all of the skills that you've amassed <clears throat> if you had the opportunity to bump into that 20 year old that was coming into group fit that sarah was springing her step um, obviously off to her next Glen Ostergaard class. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, obviously your advice to Sarah would be keep, be persistent because this is going to pay <laughs> off girl. But uh, what, what is, what's, what advice could you potentially give to, to the younger version? Um, knowing there's so many life lessons a, ahead of you. Is there, a, is there one gem? Um, I think probably one thing that's coming to my forefront of mind right now that I'm continually trying to work on is don't be afraid to say no. <laughs> 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 work in progress at the moment, but um, yeah, yeah some, something that um, is something that I probably need to continue to work on. Don't be afraid to say no, but also um, don't stop learning. Yeah always um you know knowledge is power yep. so keep on learning i think that would be one thing um and it's something that i'm working on at the moment actually like something i'm so excited about like i'm learning about um a subject that is fairly untalked about um it, i'm working on menopause okay. um learning awesome. about menopause and yep. that's going to be my next sort of segue in my life is as i mean i'm not going through it yet but i will be in the next few years is is moving transitioning through menopause and it's a subject that you know it's not really talked about it's not very open discussion so always learn that's probably one thing that i tell my younger self always learn con continue to learn yeah, um, knowledge is power knowledge is knowledge is power <clears throat> um and we get to, we obviously get to bump into a, the the younger version of you because there's a massive picture. I think it's still up on Les Mills <laughs> on the wall. It's like, hey, yeah. stop, Sarah. Whoa, stop. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Back in the day when they used to use me as a model. <clears throat> Back in the day. 
back in yeah. the day, hey, the, the good old days. These are the good old days, mate. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess tra- transitioning from that, um, and it, it, it truly has been wonderful to catch up with you. Um, that advice that you're giving yourself, is there any is there any gem or sort of parting thought that you could leave with our audience? And it doesn't have to be relevant to group fit. Obviously, you know, we get a fair audience that we're interested through um, the experience of having seen you on DVDs and knowing you as a person, et cetera. Um, is there any advice that you can offer uh, anybody, anybody that's listening in life's journey, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're trying to achieve, is there something that maybe has helped you that you could pass on? Um, I think probably the most important thing for me is just being real and being yeah. true to yourself. Yeah. Just, you know, if you're, if you're trying to be someone who you're not, it's going to come across. And if you're true to yourself, people can relate to you better. Um, you're more trustworthy. There's, you know, just being real, I think probably is what I would say there. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I love that. And it's hard. It's hard to do a... Eh? It's so super hard to do when we're bombarded with all these images. and but Yeah, and if you're confident in yourself, I mean, I think it's harder in today's world because, like you say, of social media with images, that you, the perception of who you should be. Um, I think if you're, you know, if you're confident in yourself, um, maybe doing things like affirmations and stuff help. Yeah. You know, if you believe in yourself, believe in who you are you can be yourself you can be more authentic you can be real yeah having faith is with proven time and uh, because I guess we forget the triumph and adversity too all of the things we've overcome to get here and the ability yeah yeah you need it right you need it for growth yeah um I see a lot of people that struggle with you know we're, we're talking about consistently reinventing or finding the next version of ourselves and the resistance and letting go of the former self because it's quite scary. Yeah. Um, and I, I love the idea. I talked to someone about it uh, last week, actually. Just take the new version of you for a road test. Take it out. See how it feels. <laughs> Just yeah. have a conversation. If you're not ready to take that version to work yet, we've got <laughs> some things that we've talked about and discussed, and I think you can leave those behind. Just leave them behind for a day and go out and experiment with that version of yourself and see how it feels and how great it feels. You know, there's going to be a little bit of resistance, but when you start to get comfortable with it, just hang on to it and then it's done. It's very easy to say, not very easy to do. Um, but that's, you know, that, that's what I really um, have always loved about you, mate, is your ability just to be yourself and, again, to be so humble and kind Um and the the help and advice that you've given me in my uh, call it a, a career, I guess, my evolution of a as a group fitness instructor, therefore evolution as a person. Um, I just want to say thank you for the for the for the time that you've always given me and continue to give me. So you've been a a, a real rock for me, and and um, to look back on those times with with such fond memories. Um, please thanks adam no worries. it's been my pleasure I, lo- I love always catching up with you you're such a positive upbeat person and you know if you think positive if, you, if you're positive you'll think positive things all the time good things happen to you right yeah and surrounding yourself with the right people people who believe yeah. in you and sometimes 100%. when you don't believe in yourself and and yeah. and, <clears throat> and that's okay as, as we've discussed it's a bit of a roller coaster it's a bit of a roller coaster journey, but the stuff you've talked about in terms of work ethic, I love that. Being yep. kind, I love that. Uh, yep. Manners, love that. Yes. Because <laughs> we're all children <laughs> and we need to stump up for that as well. Manners, you know, that yeah, self belief yeah. and that determination. Um, and, you know, if, 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 and I've discussed this with many, many people, if you could see the version that other people see, it'd be so, it, it'd be so different because we always view ourselves differently. But, believing yeah. in your ability to be great and you've been um, a great example of of that yeah. um so sarah thank you so much um My pleasure mr rigby thank you your time and your energy and mum squad fitness uh, dot com please look it up get online uh, and if you don't if you can't get out of the house for whatever reason whether you're on lockdown there's some great online options where you can see sarah in her element just having yeah. a laugh 
and I'm and also I'm also good. can I just add I'm yeah. also doing online cycle classes too. So yes, yeah, <laughs> so much fun. Like oh yeah, I love it because I get to use my own music and create my own choreography, and it's quite cool. So if awesome. you want to join me online in a cycle session, I've got those going too. Oh shit, yes, do that if you can get an, an, uh, 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 an a bike, indoor bike. Um, just get, get on and get it under something that you'll never forget. It'll help you fall in love with fitness as I've fallen in love with fitness. And the impact yeah. has given me the ability to share that with other people and so many different scales. Um, ladies and gents, that is episode 45 of the DMC podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and again, if you can be anything, please be kind first to yourself. And then it puts you in a great position to be kind to every body else you deserve the time you're worth it take care we'll see you soon don't forget to subscribe if you can and share um love to hear your feedback and we'll see you real soon that's dmc podcast peace see you bye